Hello, this is Tim Shambly with Stromquist here for another tech tip. Today's topic is chiller surge. A lot of questions about chiller surge, what causes it, what can you do to prevent it. To understand what surge is, we need to understand the basic operation of a chiller. I've uh, drawn on the table uh, just the basic diagram of a chiller and its associated system components. We've got our compressor, which sends uh, our refrigerant to the condenser. That refrigerant flows down as a liquid through our economizer or float valve or some other type of metering device into the evaporator. And the evaporator mixes with the heat from our uh, chill water loop boils off the refrigerant, sends it to the compressor, and that is our refrigeration cycle uh, as uh, uh, in respect to a low pressure centrifugal chiller. Now, if we look at our evaporator and we look at our condenser, each of these vessels have refrigerant and they have water. Down here in the evaporator, we have water going to our air handlers coming back from our handler through our pump and back to the evaporator. Now, what's going on here is we've got our return air, BTUs, the heat from our return air, in, goes into the water through the air handler coils. It mixes all together in your return water piping, goes to your evaporator. Now, the heat from this water is transferred to this refrigerant. So the refrigerant temperature goes up and also you've got a pressure and you've got a, in refrigeration, temperature pressure relationship. Uh, so I'm gonna represent graphically the pressure in this evaporator. I'm just gonna make a mark right here and this is just represents the pressure right here in this vessel. This compressor takes this refrigerant at this pressure and it lifts it up to the condenser. Now this condenser takes water from the tower, heat exchange from the refrigerant, from the warm refrigerant into the uh, tower water, sends it out to the tower, goes in the tower, flows through the tower fill, cools through evaporation, and return through your pump back to the condenser so that you've got a condenser water loop, you've got an evaporator water loop. The temperature and pressure of this vessel, I'm gonna represent with a mark and say, that pressure is right there. Now, what's going on in this chiller system, this compressor is in effect lifting the pressure from the evaporator into the condenser, that is what we call lift. Now, this compressor is designed for a particular range of pressure differential. If that pressure goes up, if that pressure differential goes up, and let's represent it right here, an increase in pressure differential. If it gets to the point where the pressure differential exceeds the pumping capacity of this centrifugal compressor, then what happens is this compressor can no longer lift the refrigerant pressure to this high pressure. And what happens is you will Although the compressor is turning, the pressure will go backwards through that spinning impeller. It goes backwards through this system and into the evaporator, which drops our pressure differential and then it settles out. Now, that condition, that backward flow is a temporary flow because as it does that, the differential pressure comes in line 
And so now it's pumping again until it starts to build that pressure differential where it cannot pump against and if you have a backward flow again. That backward flow is called surge. Most people who are around chillers long enough have heard it. It's very, very noisy. Uh, this is a very loud event. If your chiller surges, you will know it. Now, um, your sense of surge is a function of this pressure differential. You've got different causes. You've got anything that causes this lift to increase. If, it, that in, if that differential pressure exceeds the pumping capacity, you will have surge. So, what causes surge? One of the biggest causes of surge is right here with the cooling tower. If we have our, our water going through the tower, if we have something going on, and maybe we have a, a reduction in flow, possibly a stopped up strainer, then the pressure in this condenser will rise It'll lead to surge. Uh, same thing, tower fan, if a fan belt breaks or transmission uh, malfunctions or you know something like that and that fan stops, you will very quickly uh, reach a high temperature corresponding to a high pressure corresponding to a very large lift, you will surge. So that's just a couple of reasons. Sometimes your uh, tubes can get so dirty that that can interfere with heat exchange, your refrigerant temperature gets too high, making the pressure high again surge. So we've got um, uh, water flow, uh, something wrong with the, temp, uh, with the temperature coming back from the tower because the uh, fans broke or, or transmission problem. Um, you can have leaves in the uh, distribution of the, uh, of the tower not allowing good um, uh, saturation dis or distribution of the water through the tower fill and uh, that hurts your uh, uh, temperature drop um, causing the pressure to go up. You can all, another cause is we can have air in the refrigerant. Air in your refrigerant will, or non-condensables of any type will cause this pressure to go up again the lift. So do you see a, a, a pattern here? Anything that causes a raise in temperature and pressure can cause um, uh, surge. You can also have surge on the low side of the machine. If we look down here, just like this line can go up for a, a number of different reasons related over here to this part of the system, we can also have our pressure in the evaporator drop and that will also increase your lift and lead to surge. It's a little less common but it, it does happen. Um, you can have again a stopped up strainer, uh, low refrigerant charge, um, you might have a little issue going on if, if you have a uh, economizer with an orifice that's starting to get uh, contaminated and stopped up. Or if you have a float, if, if your machine has a float and it starts sticking, that can also uh, lead to the low side pressure dropping, temperature dropping, and leading to surge. Uh, often though, if you hit that realm, uh, you're going to have a low temperature safety that's going to take the machine offline. Um, so just a quick uh, recap, condenser side, evaporator side. Either side can lead to surge, and surge is just an increase in pressure differential. Um, thanks for joining me for this quick discussion on chiller surge, and um, stay tuned for the next tech tip.
If you need to control it or measure it, Stromquist & Company has a control solution for you. With over $2 million of inventory between our Georgia and Florida locations, an easy-to-use online ordering platform, same-day shipping, and a factory-trained team of controls experts to answer your questions, Stromquist & Company continues in its tradition of offering great service and great products. 